it's pale, it's whirlpooled, it's dry hopped. Today we're drinking road soda. Hi guys, it's Jim here from Dr. Tankenstein with another episode of Beers of the British Isles. On today's episode, I've done something that I haven't done before. I've kind of gone outside of the British Isles with an A. Um, because yesterday, randomly, uh, a box from B52 showed up at my door uh, in the name of my girlfriend. So I guess. She went ahead and bought a Beer 52 box um, and I figured that since these things are widely available and quite popular by all accounts, um, I would do a beer from there. Uh, I'm no way affiliated with Beer 52, um, they don't sponsor me at all, uh, I've never had a conversation with them whatsoever, uh, that's just where I got this beer from today. Uh, that being said, I know that whilst this was in this month's box, uh, you can also buy it separately. So if you're, if you're so inclined, uh, you can head over to their website. I'm assuming it's beer52.com. I don't know. Um, and grab yourself a road soda. Um, so this beer, get into it, is a pale ale. It's a 4.8% it's a pale ale brewed in the New England style. And that's the kind of terminology I can get on board with. I, I mean, I've moaned enough over the past few weeks about New England pale ale, and I've, you know, talked about whether that's a real thing or not, whether a New England pale ale exists or whether it's New England IPA or whatever. A, new, a, a pale ale brewed in the New England style, that's the kind of lexicon I can get involved with. Never used the word lexicon before. What is the New England style? So what I'm imagining here is it's going to be hazy. It's going to be on the low end of the bitterness scale. Uh, so it's going to be quite sweet, I guess, which, you know, marries quite well with a pale ale, uh, American pale ale, uh, particularly uh, in the first place. So this, I mean, looking through the bottle, you can tell that it's hazy. The grist information on this is that it has oats and wheat, you know, classic kind of haze makers there. Um, and they boldly say that they have added carapils for extra body. So, I mean, <laughs> I don't know if I'm going to be eating this beer with a spoon or what. Um, you know, oats, wheat and carapils sounds like it's going to be a bit of a monster. However, this brewery, uh, Mondo Brewery, uh, I haven't said that yet quote the uh, the starting gravity of the beer uh, which is 12 plato um, roughly translates to uh, 1.048 on the specific gravity scale uh, and that's just a measure of how much sugars in the beer went before it's fermented uh, so 1.048 and 4.8 percent alcohol translates to quite a low finishing gravity we're talking 1.006 now, typically, you know, beers, whether they're New England IPAs or New England pale ales, if they exist, or whatever, they typically will have a slightly higher finishing gravity, somewhere in the region of 1.015 to 1.02 even, for some examples. Uh, so basically, that means that usually the New England style doesn't just mean hazy, it also means, you know, quite full-bodied, which this isn't really screaming out that it is with such a low finishing gravity. We'll find out later on that front. Um, so I've gone on a bit much about the malt bill there. This is a pale ale. It's a New England style pale ale. Brewed in the New England style is what we're saying. Um, so we're basically we're worried about hops. Now this is interesting because I don't have any IBU information on this. Um, I'm assuming because it's a pale ale brewed in the New England style. Um, the IBUs are quite low. Typically, that is um, the way it is. So this brewery quotes 
that it has Citra and Amarillo hops in the Whirlpool and it's dry hopped with Citra, Amarillo and Cascade. Doesn't mention anything about actual boil hops. That kind of compounds that for me. So, so a little brief kind of primer on hops. Um, if you want to extract bitterness from hops, uh, you throw them in the boil, you boil them up for a certain length of time, and that kind of causes a, a chemical transformation in the hops. Adding them in the dry hop extracts a lot of flavor from them, but doesn't extract any bitterness whatsoever. The Whirlpool, well, if you see something quoted as being a Whirlpool edition, means that it wasn't actually boiled, but that the hops did get hot. It's almost kind of a steeping of hops. So, so after the beer has been boiled, uh, the temperature's lowered somewhat, the hops are then added, and the beer is kind of whirl, you know, literally they, they vortex the beer, they, they create a whirlpool in it with the hops in there, kept at a certain temperature for a certain length of time. Now this can obviously extract a bit of bitterness because, you know, it's not, it's not room temperature, it is an elevated temperature, but nowhere near as much as boiling them. So I'm interested here as to whether they just didn't mention the boil hops or whether they actually didn't put them in in the first place. That's kind of interesting. It's kind of leading me to think that this beer is going to be actually super sweet or super not bitter, at least, if that makes sense. Now, just, just to kind of round this off, just to finish it off, the yeast that this beer, um, Road Soda, is fermented with is a Vermont strain yeast. Now, that Vermont strain kind of crops up every now and again. Um, it's one of these classic New England uh, style yeasts. You know, it will uh, give you a hop biotransformation. It'll it'll form that fine haze uh, that is in the beer uh, that, that that we would expect from a beer brewed in the New England style, if that's what we're saying this is. Um, so that's exactly what I'm expecting. I'm expecting a very low bitterness beer. It's going to be very hazy, quite light in the bike. I can't see it being very uh, very full bodied, if I'm honest. Um, but it's going to be fruity. It's going to be tropical. It's going to be citrusy. I think it is going to actually be uh, quite tasty. So let's find out. Here we go then. I'm in the glass. Uh, this is nice and cold. First observations. Um, very low carbonation. It actually does look quite juicy. You know, that New England style, juicy style beer. Uh, this does very much look the part. Um, it's actually quite quite attractive looking. Um, the, the head retention's poor, right? I did pour this flat, and I poured this flat because uh, on the back of the beer here, it says uh, vegan, great, um, unpasteurized and unfiltered. Uh, and I just, I, I, I don't buy it. I, I don't buy it. I think that you should just filter your beer, man. You know, I mean, do, do, don't give me something that I'm going to regret pouring heavily. You know, I, 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 don't, I don't like a beer that's got pieces in it. Some people might do, and maybe I'm annoying those. those maybe one of my four, four viewers there is, uh, is one of those people. But uh, personally, I'm not a fan of that, which is why I've just left um, that little bit uh, of of sediment in the bottom there. Um, but even without that, it's still very hazy, it's still very attractive, juicy looking, great. So let's uh, let's give it a sniff. Okay, uh, wow, okay, so it, it smells, the, the, the thing that just smacks you in the face is a peachy smell, straight up. Peachy and strangely, almost a spicy uh, character. I think that probably what that is, um, that sort of semi-spicy note, it, it's probably been really, really heavily dry hopped with citra. Um, those essential oils uh, in citra, particularly if you dry hop early enough on, can give that sort of semi-spicy note. I don't, I don't mean, you know, it's not, it's not, you know, a curry or anything like that. It's just a touch, a touch spicy. So peachy, 
spicy. Uh, there is a, a touch of pineapple in there too, though uh, they're nowhere near as strong as the peach. Okay, yeah, initially it's as I expected. Uh, it's actually quite watery. It, it doesn't look, it doesn't look it. Uh, sorry, watery, the, the texture, let's say. The mouthfeel is on the watery side. Um, somewhat disappointing, but if you, um, if my calculations were correct, let's say, earlier on, uh, with the with the low finishing gravity, then then you can see, then you can see why that would be the case. Um, the flavor's not bad, it's, it's, not, it's not terrible. It's certainly not sweet. Uh, it's not sweet, it's not bitter. Yeah, if I'm honest, there's, there's not really a, a hell of a lot to it. Uh, that peachiness that I said was, was coming through in the aroma definitely carries through into the palate. Um, I would say that it was a soft mouthfeel, but there's just a little bit too much carbonation and not enough stuff in there for the carbonation to hide behind for it to be, uh, for it to be a soft mouthfeel, in my opinion. Mondo Brewing Company of Battersea, London. Um, two American guys, I guess, came over to London uh, in 2014, started up Mondo Brewing Company. I don't know a hell of a lot about them. Um, their website is still under construction, so I guess they're sort of in that phase. I mean, you know, this uh, current climate, you know, uh, June, June 2020 in the UK, uh, Current climate's forcing a lot of breweries to um, push their online stuff a little bit more, so maybe that's why the website isn't isn't so up to date. Um, what I do know about them is that they have awesome artwork. You know, take a look at the website; um, has, has amazing artwork on it. Uh, the bottle here that that I, I can show you uh, there is um, the artwork's very, really, really quite cool, kind of like '80s inspired. Um, <laughs> And uh, the, the motto as a brewery is spun on the axis of collaborative experience. And um, I think that that coupled with the artwork kind of, kind of gives you a good indication of, of what these guys are about. You know, a little bit, a little bit cool, a little bit quirky, a little bit out there. Let's put this one to bed. Let's um, let's kick road soda down the road. Does make sense? Um, okay, so I said initially uh, it looks great. Um, the head retention was poor, but that might be my fault um, for pouring it so so gently because of the uh, the unpasteurized nature of, of the beer. Uh, sorry, the unfiltered nature of the beer. Um, it looks great. Honest, honestly, it, it looks fantastic. Uh, it kind of glows in the light. It's got a very pale yellow color coupled with that kind of fine haze. Um, really, really looks looks the part. It looks it looks really great. The aroma, yeah. I mean that I that that peach is still there, and I'm still getting that kind of just slight. I don't want to say pepperiness. It's not that. It's kind of a it's a spice. It is a certain a certain level of of spice, and I'm not quite sure what it is. Uh, I'm gonna pin that down to heavy citra dry hopping. Um, whether I'm right or not, I don't know. Yeah, so for me, um, it lacks body. Uh, I made a joke earlier before I, before I tried this that they threw everything at it, you know, um, oats, wheat, and carapils. Uh, I don't know where they went. I mean, I guess what's just what's happened here is it's just, it's just fermented out. I guess um, you know to to start at that low-ish starting gravity and and end up with four point eight percent alcohol in this beer. Um, it's just a little bit thin for my liking. Um, it's not bitter. It's it's not sweet because there's no sweetness left in it. Um, 
I mean, to, to me, it kind of tastes like they made, uh, they made some, they made some alcoholic hop juice almost. I mean, the, the hop flavor is quite pleasant. You know, that you get that nice peachiness. Uh, there's, there's a touch of citrus back there. That spiciness doesn't quite translate to the palate. Um, but yeah, it's kind of a nice tropical light drink uh, that I guess has 4.8% alcohol in it. Um, it's, a, it's a good, it would be a good session beer. So this might be a good sort of six or seventh beer of the day when you're staring about down the barrel of a few more. Um, you could probably drink a few of these despite it being 4.8%. You know, I haven't felt that yet. Um, for, for me, um, it's not a pale ale and it's not quite in the New England style enough for me, if I'm honest. Um, but that doesn't mean that you won't enjoy it. So if you like pale ales brewed in the New England style, um, if you like a good session beer, if you like something that's just light and refreshing and fruity, then, you know, get over to Beer 52. Uh, don't go to the brewery's website yet because uh, it's not up, but head over to Beer 52, grab yourself uh, one of these, uh, a road soda uh, pale ale brewed in the New England style, um, and let me know what you think. Um, if you do like it, if you like this, uh, you know, head down to your local bottle shop and ask them if they have other pale ales brewed in the New England style. And do use that terminology, please. I would appreciate it. Um, whilst you're doing so, whilst you're enjoying your road soda, uh, stick on Born to be Wild by Steppenwolf. Uh, I don't know why. That's just what's been in my head as I've been drinking this. Uh, kind of like a, a real sort of American rock classic. Um, but Steppenwolf sounds un-American. I, I don't know. It just seems like that transatlanticness kind of fits with this road born to be wild it just it just fits for me um in the meantime guys cheers